Legend has it that at the end of the Constitutional Convention in 1787, Benjamin Franklin was asked what kind of government had been created, and he responded, a republic, if you can keep it. This would not be a direct democracy where the tyranny of the majority might be imposed on the rest of the electorate. Instead, it would be a representative democracy designed to cool the passions of the mob and guarantee certain rights that couldn't be repealed by a majority vote. It looks like Cardano has been taking notes and is also trying to guarantee an equal playing field for all of us. Ready? Let's go. Today, we'll discuss the new delegate representative concept introduced by IOHK, some quality of life improvements from Sunday Swap, some new details from Wing Riders, and an unexpected openness toward Cardano's most prominent founder from some of our loudest critics. If you like freedom and representative democracy, or if you're finding value in these videos each weekday, please consider delegating to the Army of Spies stake pool ticker AOS. We've talked about it before, but if governance is very tricky, then we can say that democracy is extremely tricky. There's a fundamental challenge with democracy, and maybe Alexis de Tocqueville put it best when he said, so what is a majority taken as a whole, if not an individual who has opinions and most often interests contrary to another individual called the minority. This is the problem that's been referred to as the tyranny of the majority or the tyranny of the masses. If you have a direct democracy where every member of the electorate gets to vote directly on every single issue, there will inevitably at times be situations that look like zero-sum games where a majority could emerge that has interests very contrary to the rest of the electorate, who in this context would be a political minority. And of course, a self-interested majority is going to vote in favor of their own interests to the detriment of the rest of the electorate. One solution to this problem is to create not a direct democracy, but a representative democracy where the electorate would delegate their decision-making to representatives. And you would strive to have those representatives not represent just the majority, just the minority, but to represent everyone, or at least to have representatives who are counterbalanced against each other so that everyone is represented in a way that the tyranny of the majority can't be imposed on the political minority. Of course, you would also want to have some kind of foundational compact or agreement right at the beginning that certain rights would be guaranteed to everyone and that a majority vote couldn't strip those rights away from any political minority. This gets even more complicated when you take into account that that initial compact or agreement needs to be a living, breathing document that can evolve with the times, with changing circumstances. So you want to be able to to modify it. But at the same time, you don't want any of those modifications to be the type that result from a majority vote to strip the political minority of the rights we're trying to guarantee in the first place. In short, democracy is really hard, as evidenced by history being littered with failed democracies. But it looks like Cardano is going to make good on its promises and make a run at real effective democracy. Like we discussed, a good democracy has probably got to be a representative democracy. So here we go. Here's IOG's introduction of the concept of delegate representatives. They say DREPs will vote on the vast majority of proposals within Project Catalyst and enhance the quality of decision making with each fund, within each fund. But I think that this this proposal is kind of just the seed of representative democracy. And if this is successful, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the beginning of something that blossoms into a much wider much wider kind of umbrella that includes all things Voltaire. 
More on that in just a second. The article says that Project Catalyst has become the world's largest decentralized innovation fund. We already knew that. They mentioned that FundAid had almost a thousand proposals, and Catalyst is on track to fund over 2,100 proposals during 2022. They're going to fund over 2,100 proposals in 2022. If you think about it, that's way too many proposals for anyone to even look at. I mean, in, in Fund 8, they had a thousand proposals. I would hesitate to try to even imagine how many people might have even attempted to have read all 1,000 proposals. It's probably a very, very small number, let alone, you know, even, even just reading over the course of 2022, the 2,100 proposals that they think they're going to fund, this is a huge number of proposals. It's too much reading for any, almost any casual voter in the Cardano ecosystem. It's too much to even ask them to undertake. They say, as the number of proposals increases, so does the community's responsibility to both review and vote upon them to ensure that all proposals gain the attention they deserve and to facilitate continued growth. A new system is required. I agree with this. They say delegation enables ADA holders to delegate their voting power to one or many D reps. This allows the more passive voter a chance to continue to have their voice heard, but now across more proposals than they could personally read and evaluate. These D reps will vote on the vast majority of proposals. So they're saying the D reps will vote on the vast majority of proposals. And we've already heard that that number of proposals that are just going to be funded will be 2,100 proposals. So these D-reps are going to be doing a whole lot of voting. D-reps will coordinate and form policies together, source and review data, consult with experts, and ultimately vote on an array of projects and topics that the community has brought forward. This makes sense. We basically are talking about having this group of expert voters. They'll become experts by reviewing and sourcing data, consulting with experts, forming policies, They'll be our expert voters, and we can decide who we're going to delegate our voting power to. They talk about how they're reopening this. I think this is important. They're reopening the uh, the application to become a D rep. They say over the coming weeks, IOG will be organizing a series of workshops that go into greater detail on what it means to be a D rep, the incentive model, and what impact D reps will have on Project Catalyst. Notice this: the incentive model. So it looks like these D-reps, obviously, if you're going to have them vote on a majority of proposals and the number that they think they're going to fund, just the ones they're going to fund will be 2,100. So the number they're going to have to vote on, a majority of them, is going to be a very large number. So obviously, they're going to have to incentivize these people. So this is now, it sounds, this is a paid position. I have no idea the amount of remuneration involved in this, but this is a paid group of expert voters. Maybe expert voter is the wrong word. Maybe what we really mean is professional voter. This is starting to sound like a member of parliament, a congressperson, or a legislative representative, isn't it? When you click into the application, you come to the screen, and they give us some additional details. They say they're very excited about how ADA holders can share or split their voting power to D reps. And they're hoping this will contribute to kind of a collaborative team spirit kind of delegation situation. They say many, if not all, D reps will have voting power delegated to them from the same ADA holder. I think what they're what they're getting at here is that you might have a an ADA holder who delegates voting power to a large number of the D reps. They don't really tell us here how many D reps there might be. They call this the initial cohort of D reps. I have no idea what the what the actual number is going to be, but it sounds like there's going to be a bunch of them. But the number is sort of like within the boundaries that they think it's possible that a single a delegator might have delegated to all of the D reps. They say this, they want to stress the importance of careful deliberation together and seeking each other's advice as proposals are considered and ultimately voted on. So they're saying, hey, if uh, if a bunch of UD reps all have the same delegators delegating their voting power to you, you should probably work together. They say, additionally, delegating voting power does not mean rewards are forfeited. And for those who become D reps, your rewards will factor in the time commitment and dedication that role entails. Here's where they sort of they sort of up they sort of 
up the expectation uh, about how much time they're expecting. They say for transparency, it's a time and community commitment that is considerable. And we expect the role to take up a significant part of someone's working life. Let me repeat that a significant part of someone's working life. This is starting and you get paid. This is starting to sound like this is starting to sound more and more like we're talking about politicians here, aren't we guys? I know some of you will be recoiling at that. You'll be recoiling at the idea that we might have politicians in the Cardano ecosystem. But I think what they're what they're trying to I think that's why they're pushing the collaborative team spirit thing up here to sort of dispel the notion that we're talking about politicians. But they are going to be spending a significant part of their working life, and it sounds like there's some remuneration involved, even though we don't know what that remuneration is. But if you're devoting a significant part of your life, working life, I, I guess it also has to be significant. They say the incentive model will reflect the importance and time commitment for this responsibility. More on this to come. They say... Delegating voting power is always optional and can be recalled after each funding round as long as before the snapshot deadline. ADA holders can split their voting power between themselves and their chosen D rep to maintain freedom to vote directly. So we can have both uh, representative democracy here and also direct democracy if you want it. They say absolute liquid democracy is a powerfully flexible structure. I agree. And I think people will figure out, um, I think under this kind of double model, I think we'll figure out pretty quick if people actually want to delegate their vote to D reps because they realize they can't possibly read all these proposals, or if people want to maintain the ability to vote for themselves, even though I think we know that people don't vote as often as we would like them to. I know some of you are already like deleting your browser history and practicing your campaign speeches. I'm not sure if any of that's going to be necessary. Here's what's on the application. They want your email, your full name, a backup way to reach you. And then these two questions are kind of interesting to me. I think they're foreshadowing here what this could grow into. They say, they kind of explain what the DREPs are going to be doing. They say DREPs will coordinate and form policies together, source and review data, consult with experts, and here's where it gets interesting, and ultimately vote on an array of projects and topics from project catalyst proposals to Voltaire Council elections. We will be detailing other roles within the Voltaire and DCF governance structure in the coming weeks and months. If you are interested in hearing more about other opportunities, select yes. So they say, are you interested in other roles within governance and Voltaire? So they're not just looking for a uh, catalyst. And I think we all realize at this point that catalyst is sort of the catalyst is the beginning of Voltaire. Catalyst is a part of Voltaire, but they're already talking about a wider impact on Voltaire. Uh, there's mention of these Voltaire council elections and they start to ask you, are you interested in other roles with, within governance and Voltaire? So they're looking for governance beyond just these D reps who would be reviewing proposals in Catalyst. There's some other requirements. They want you to vote in the next fund eight if you haven't already voted in Catalyst. And then there's this this uh, little sort of letter about your motivations to become a D-Rep. I'm sure people will be writing very inspirational stuff about how Cardano changed their life or they want to use Cardano to change other people's lives. I'll, I'll bet there'll be some great letters written because there are actually people with good intentions in our ecosystem. Not all of us are here to just flip PFPs and do DeFi, DGen stuff, which I think is a good thing. I'm really curious to see the way this turns out. I hope this is not the birth of a Cardano politician class. Hopefully it's just the beginnings, the planting of the seeds of the greater Voltaire, Voltaire governance that needs to happen in our ecosystem. Back to more normal news, Sunday Swap says, over the past few weeks, we've been steadily working in the background on some quality of life improvements. Starting today, yield farm rewards should be instant. The same transaction unlocking your tokens will pay you any Sunday rewards that have matured. Note that you may need to clear your cash to get the new behavior. If you have an old cash version of the site, you'll still receive your rewards like normal, but they may be delayed. More updates to come. 
I know uh, you you all probably know that I don't do any liquidity provision myself because I hate impermanent loss, but I know a lot of you do. And um, I see a lot of you commenting in the uh, Sunday Swap Discord um, nonstop pretty much for the last, uh, since the inception of Sunday Swap and yield farming there about the delay in getting your yield farming rewards. Looks like that is not a thing anymore as long as you clear your cash. I really appreciate Sunday Swap for being the pioneers who brought us the first AMM decks on Cardano. And they had about as rocky a road as you could possibly have. So very much appreciate their team and their willingness to be the very first ones. We already had an order book decks, obviously a Muse Swap, but Sunday Swap was the first AMM decks. If that's not enough yield farming news for you, Wing Riders is also letting us know exactly how their yield farming is going to work. Okay, maybe not exactly, but a lot of details. I don't know if it's exactly every single detail, but it's a lot of details about how the yield farming is going to work. I really appreciate they have the fancy scythe here because they're harvesting all those coins. I think we've only seen the space guy. I guess he's not a space guy because his mouth is, he couldn't actually be in space because it's not totally enclosed. He's just some kind of like, futuristic fighter pilot, I guess, but uh, I appreciate that we're not just seeing him standing there in his normal futuristic fighter pilot outfit. He's also doing a little agriculture, a little like medieval agriculture here. I appreciate that he's expanding his horizons. And we get a lot of uh, details on the wing riders farming, yield farming. I guess it's going to happen from day one of the launch of wing riders, which is a little bit of a change, a little bit of a change. We've definitely had Dex's launch and not seeing the yield farming for some time. But Wing Riders seems to be pretty on the ball. I'm interested to see how they do right out of the gate. Finally, my gut instinct is to say that this is unexpected, but it's kind of not. Here is Bankless, the podcast that have been extremely critical of the Cardano ecosystem and said some very mean things. Bankless posted this today. Imagine an episode with IOHK Charles on Bankless. Could it happen? And then the, the little emoticon with the with the monocle. This, when I saw this, I was like, whoa. But I thought about it for a couple seconds, and I realized this, this shouldn't really be unexpected. I think the entire Ethereum ecosystem is watching what's happening in Ethereum, realizing the merge is almost upon us. The um, one of the many rhyming phases of evolution of of uh, Ethereum. What we've got the merge, the purge. I can't even remember the splurge. I can't even remember all the actual names, rhyming names of the different eras they're going to undergo. But I believe it's the merge that is upon us when they will finally go to proof of stake. And the Ethereum ecosystem is realizing that that's not the answer to all the problems they were expecting. In fact, it's not even an answer to the fee problem. Things really aren't going to change that much. It's just that it won't be miners making all the validation money anymore. It'll be the proof of stake pool operators. So it's not really, it shouldn't really be surprising, I think, that these very loud critics of Cardano are suddenly being more open to Cardano, suddenly being more friendly. It's a really easy play, right? If you've been a relentless critic of Cardano, and then you realize that your criticism may have been groundless. There may have been no actual basis for your criticism. I mean, it's a lot easier to make an about face, to make the 180 and be like, oh, actually, let's have the founder of Cardano on our podcast and we'll make friends. And that's the best way to exit this groundless position that previously has been very loudly touted by us. It's much easier. And of course, Charles, not afraid of talking to anybody, said, sure. You can tell it wasn't the normal enthusiastic Charles. I would love to come and talk to you. <laughs> He's more like, sure. Because I think he also knows this is going to happen time and time again. All of these very harsh critics, maximalists of whatever other blockchains, whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum, okay, maybe the Bitcoin people will never make an about face, but the other Gen 3 
blockchains. The other smart contract blockchains, I think the maximalists of a lot of those chains are going to be making about faces like this. Suddenly, they're going to be very open and welcoming to Cardano when they realize their previous very loud criticisms just don't hold up any longer. I hope everybody is having a great week and I'll talk to you tomorrow.